Well, welcome back to our quest for world domination, in a purely footballing sense of course. Last time out we won the OFC Nations Cup in dramatic fashion for our first major trophy. That does mean Oceania is now done for the purposes of the challenge, but we can't exactly go anywhere else because the first season in game hasn't happened so there are no other jobs available yet. There are some far, far worse places to have to just wait around in than New Zealand I suppose like Ipswich. The European Championships have of course been delayed until next summer so our next potential job could come there, but for now we are certainly looking upwards as our triumph last time sees us jump up 8 places to 114th in the FIFA rankings. We passed the time until then with friendly wins over North Korea and Madagascar which sees us rise up even further. I mean who actually decides this stuff? We're behind Mauritania and Bahrain. Can you name a single footballer who's ever played for either of them? I try to book friendlies against teams who are above us in the rankings but we should be beating so I can sort of cheat the system and get us moved up a little bit but no one's even interested. We do eventually get one booked against South Africa and in what is undoubtedly our best result so far we win 2-0 with goals from Ryan Thomas and Marco Rojas sealing an excellent performance all round. They were actually ranked 72nd in the world so that was actually extremely good although I'm not quite sure I agree with Logan Rogerson's assessment that it has boosted confidence across the entire country. I mean this is the country with the most feared rugby union team in history, I don't think they're going to be partying in the streets because we won a friendly. But clearly FIFA agree as they move us up to 110th. I mean forget about trophies, can we make the top 100 before the end of the episode? That's the real question. We beat 84 Franks Haiti 2-1 before the business of World Cup qualifiers. To actually get to Qatar we need to win a group with Papua New Guinea and Fiji and then beat whoever wins the other group over two legs and then beat a team from Asia, North or South America to actually qualify which all seems needlessly complicated. And we get off to the best possible start by drawing 0-0 with Papua New Guinea. Brilliant stuff. Chris Wood is apparently only one goal away from becoming New Zealand's all-time leading goalscorer with 29 goals, which considering that David Brown literally scored 11 goals for Papua New Guinea last episode alone isn't especially impressive is it? Anyway clearly someone is impressed with our performances because we get offered an interview by Preston. I appreciate the offer but this is international journeyman and we have no time for distractions and also you're currently 22nd in the championship so good luck with that. November brings the news that we are creeping up the rankings yet again, this time up to 109th. I mean it's like when they do the scores in Eurovision, every entry brings us closer to still only being the 100th best side in the world. And I had no idea that a nil-nil with Papua New Guinea would make us so attractive to championship chairman because now I've got offers from Bristol City and Sheffield Wednesday. We reach January and have to face the news we've all been fearing. Sean Dyche's reckless overplaying of Chris Wood sees him injured for three months. How is he supposed to break that record now? I've got Jacinda Arden standing by with a knighthood here. Eventually we make it through to March to play the next qualifiers. We dominate Fiji with a goal through Marco Rojas early on and then an absolute thunderbolt from Liberetto for two before Sarpeet Singh wraps things up from the spot for a 3-0 win. A good performance all round. It was at that point that I noticed that four of my squad had actually been released by their clubs and were therefore using their international appearance fees to survive. I mean I'm happy to help guys, there's literally no one to replace you. Before our next match, the Everton ball then offered me an interview as well to replace Carlo Ancelotti. I mean, not to put myself down, but that's a bit of a downgrade, isn't it? Besides, I'm a bit busy preparing for Papua New Guinea, the only side to really cause us issues so far. We take the lead early on through Rojas once again, before Ryan Thomas doubles it from the penalty spot, and then converts a second one just before half-time. Yep, that sound you can hear is Chris Wood sitting at home crying because he'd have definitely got the record today if he hadn't gone and got injured. Their danger man David Brown hits the post but then Adam Mitchell heads home for 4 and Joe Bell smashes one in for 5 and we've actually won with an actually prolific performance for once. We top the group with one game left and that is apparently a new team record for 12 games unbeaten. Clearly this is all too much of an achievement for my backup right back Tim Payne though because he decides to just retire from football at the age of 27. For our last qualifier against Fiji in June, the news is that Chris Wood is still injured for one more day. Put the confetti away, the record is going to have to wait. We take a 2-0 lead through Rojas and Thomas in the first half before some poor defending allows Fiji to score two of their own in the second to leave us with a 2-2 draw overall. Sloppy, but it's still enough to see us safely qualify for the final against Vanuatu and then we're still another playoff after that as well. We round the season off with a friendly defeat to Iceland but then we absolutely stun the Irish 3-2 at the Aviva Stadium. A finally fit Chris Wood opens the scoring to finally secure the record he should arguably have had years ago before goals from Bell and Barbarossas gives us a famous win. We jump up to 104th in the rankings, we haven't quite cracked the top 100 but it's a fitting farewell for retiring Winston Reid and perhaps ourselves too. Because as fun as this is, as well as the year Euros, it's the Copper America and then the Gold Cup this summer so jobs will surely be available. At the Euros England reach the final and play a German side made out of greyed out players because I didn't put the real names fix on and the fake players win it 2-1. 
I mean, what does that say about the state of English football? Serious questions for Gareth Southgate. Mainly, why have you started Rhys James in midfield? Why is Deli Alley up front? And why is Harry Kane left on the bench? But these are the jobs available now. I put some applications in and we get two offers. World Cup finalists Croatia and Norway. Both very nice options, lots of exciting young players, particularly from Norway, but neither of them are teams we're likely to win the World Cup with, right? The problem is you have to say yes or no right now. That's it, you can't delay it. The Gold Cup still hasn't happened and there might be some good jobs available after that, but we have to make a choice. Croatia are probably better now, but this Norway squad, looking at it, I think I know what I'm gonna do.